Hello, hello fellow space adventurers and welcome back to the channel. Now, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is wrapping up in just a couple of days and boy oh boy, has it been a roller coaster of emotions and CCU chains for me. My fleet has seen more makeovers than a celebrity on the red carpet. Now, we've seen a variety of brand new ships such as the sleek Argo SRV and the jaw-dropping Gatic Sulen. Needless to say, the hype for alien ships is realer than ever. I may or may not or may have picked up a railing for myself, but more on that in my next video. Oh, and let's not forget the Arastra, the brand new RSI mining ship that has hit the community like a meteor shower. And let's be honest, we can all see why. What a beautiful ship. I'm super excited to see that make it into the game, but let's be honest, it's probably a couple of years away yet. Anyways, enough of that. Buckle up, because today's video is not about shiny new toys. We are diving in to the age-old question that has split the Star Citizen community down the middle for the last year or two. And that is Anvil Carrick or Misk Odyssey. Which one's the exploration ship that we should have? What should we buy? What's going to be better? Well, with only a matter of days left of IAE, it is now decision time for your fleet. And I'm here to break down the nitty gritty of both ships. What we know we're going to get, what we're speculating we might get, and which one is your interstellar soulmate. Sound good? Let's get into it. Now, before we warp into the details of today's video, remember this is an open forum. So I want you to drop your thoughts in the comment section below because I want to hear what you think about these two ships. Anyway, enough rambling, let's dive in. And hey, if you enjoy the ride today, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Join the family. We're like a constellation of enthusiasts here who also like to mess around in the game for science. Plus, if we hit 100 likes on this video, I will spread some holiday cheer by giving away a starter pack on one of my future Christmas live streams. Tis the season after all. And don't forget to use my referral code if you do decide to buy into Star Citizen because you will get 5,000 UEC. Now, let's get down to business of these two spaceships. We will dissect their in-game roles, technical specs, and how each ship will provide you with different ways to line your little undersuit pockets with UEC. First up, the Anvil Carrick. Now the Carrick is a large size military pathfinder ship that has been civilianized into your go-to for interstellar expeditions. The package includes a Pisces as its snub ship and an Ursa Rover for ground operations, a combination that is perfect for your planet hopping adventures. On top of this, it comes equipped with a hangar that can fit a small size on ship such as the aforementioned Pisces at 13 meters and can just about cram in some slightly bigger ships such as the 100 series at 19 meters. Furthermore, it also has a stocked medbay with a tier two medical bed and four size four crew operated turrets that pack an absolute punch. Cargo wise, it can hold up to 456 SCU and from a defense standpoint, it has two L or large ship class size shields that can withstand around 200,000 hit points of damage. It sports a bridge that could be straight out of Star Trek with a generous crew quarters, mess room and various weapon racks throughout. It's practically a sci-fi lover's dream. Needless to say, it has all the ingredients for a fantastic explorer, but we're not done just yet. Future updates will bring drones, modularity, and onboard item repair facilities. Now those drones might be your space survey buddies that can help you map jump points, or maybe even handymen for the on-the-fly hull repairs. As for the modularity, the aim is to give us the option to swap out the cargo pods like trading cards. Now we're not quite sure exactly what modules we will be getting at the moment. However, some of the possible modules I managed to find on an old Spectrum post mentioned the following. So we have science and research, an extra vehicle garage, a zoology module for animals, maybe even a space marine module for dramatic infantry drops straight out of aliens or Halo ODST. We might also see fuel extension modules or a hydrogen scoop. One concept I did see was an extended hangar module that will merge all three of the cargo pods together into one. In my opinion, this is unlikely as it's never been confirmed to be possible in the past. However, obviously in this fan video made by Astro Chronicles, great YouTuber, go check out more of their content, we can see that the concept of merging the pods would be very, very helpful. Now, the main issue of this modularity discussion is what I mentioned earlier. We really have no idea of what modules will 100% be available to us. So it is hard to compare it to the Odyssey in that regard. 
is basically just speculation at this point. What we can go off of if we like is the offering of the Galaxy modules and that will give us a vague idea of what kind of modules we might see on the Carrick. Albeit we already have a med bay so it's really hit or miss, we, we don't know, we don't know. Either way this still remains a fundamental selling point for the Carrick and it has to be mentioned. So what about the Misk Odyssey or the so called Carrick Killer as CIG so aptly put it in there. Uh, Inside Star Citizen video. In my mind, it's a carrot killer. Well, believe me, the Odyssey is not here to play. It's here to offer a wide variety of gameplay options and make you really consider if the Carrick is the right exploration vessel for you. So grab your popcorn, settle in, because it's time to explore the Odyssey's offerings together. Let's go. Now, I do have to start by stating the obvious. This is all in concept, and of course, it is subject to change down the line. So take that with a pinch of salt when we're going through what the Odyssey currently has to offer. Anyways, enter the Misk Odyssey, a colossal sub-capital sized juggernaut with a symphony of cutting edge technology designed to be the ultimate multi-crew explorer ship for those who crave the thrill of long duration expeditions. This beast offers an onboard refinery and a size 2 mining laser, the same that's on the mole, that allows the crew to mine quantanium and turn it into fuel. This isn't your run of the mill explorer. It's a mobile fuel factory and a mobile base hurtling through the verse like Serenity from Firefly. Now, what makes this even better is that this fuel isn't just for the Odyssey's engines, it's a lifeline for your smaller ships chilling in the hangar. Yeah, you heard that right. Refuel your Odyssey on the go or keep your other rides topped up. Being able to refuel the vehicles in your hangar is versatility at its finest. The Odyssey's refinery even converts gas from its intakes into hydrogen fuel. This is therefore a ship that could roam the stars without ever having to worry about the availability or price of fuel. So in theory, you will never have to go back to a station or a port for anything. You can get your fuel, your food, your water all out there in the verse. Pretty crazy. So in my opinion, the Odyssey isn't just a ship, it's an interstellar adventure waiting to unfold. The self-sufficiency capability is huge and you'll even be traversing the vastness of Pyro without breaking a sweat. Continuing on, the Odyssey comes with a very generously sized hangar comparable to that of the Polaris that can comfortably fit ships ranging from a sleek Saber to a nimble 300 series. Rumour has it you might even be able to squeeze in an Ares or an SRV. How's that for gameplay options? Much like the Carrick, the Odyssey also has a separate ramp and ground vehicle area that can fit up to the size of an Ursa. However, in the Q&A with CIG, they did say that you might be able to squeeze in a Nova at the expense of some cargo space, if we are creative enough with our Tetris skills. Again, similar to the Carrick, it also sports a medical bay with a tier 2 bed and has accommodation for a crew of 6. However, on the Odyssey, all of the crew get their own private quarters with an ensuite. But this does come at the expense of the captain not getting their own fancy specialised quarters. And for me, this really hammers home the difference in the industrialist design of the MISC ship over the Anvil and not having that luxury of your own crew quarters. You're sort of just in the mix of your crew, you're equal. I kind of like that. Cargo wise, the Odyssey has less, totaling 252 SCU to the Carrick's 456. But this of course is dependent on whether you keep the cargo modules as cargo modules on the Carrick or decide to switch them out. So swings and roundabouts. Moving on to the shields, we can see that the durability of the Odyssey far outweighs that of the Carrick. The Odyssey flexes with a capital class size shield, making it a cosmic fortress able to withstand around 750,000 hit points compared to the Carrick's 200,000. This makes the Odyssey half as durable as the 890 jump. Pretty beefy. Furthermore, the Odyssey also wins the arms race with three size 5 turrets and four size 3 missiles. And to sweeten the deal, it even comes equipped with a ship tractor beam, which is really a potential game changer for some people. Now the Odyssey is not currently modular and I don't think there's any plans to make it modular in the future. However, with a base setup this good and a hangar spacious enough to host a cosmic carnivore ships, it's practically modular by nature. For example, you could take a Terrapin to fulfill that mapping role the Carrick does so well. Or you could take a Prospector to mine resources from all around the verse and make some extra cash. The possibilities are pretty much endless. 
So that brings us to the summarized pros and cons of these two Titans. So let's dive into the pros of the Carrick. Number one, cost effective adventure. The Carrick is a fair amount cheaper than the Odyssey to buy in real life, and we can assume it will be cheaper in the game too. It's currently about $100 cheaper, but bear in mind that when the Odyssey releases, there could be a price hike as per standard operations with concept ships and sales. It usually spikes in value, so we could see the Odyssey jump up to $200 above the Carrick, for example. So there, there, there is a price uh, deficit there to take into consideration. Number two, Master Mapper. The Carrick excels at mapping jump points, making it the go-to choice for those seeking to discover the unknown. The Odyssey can do this too, but the Carrick just does it way better, especially with the drones assisting. Number three, lean and mean maintenance. As a large size ship, the Carrick is more cost effective to maintain, excluding the fuel costs, of course. Components won't break the bank to replace, repair or upgrade, whereas the Odyssey is capital size, so it will be expensive. Bullet point number four, I feel the need, the need for speed. Smaller in size, the Carrick is likely to be faster, giving you the extra zing during your explorations. And number five, included goodies. The Carrick comes fully equipped by standard with an Ursa Rover and a Pisces, saving you money on the additional ships to fill up your cargo and vehicle hangers. The Odyssey doesn't have that. Point number six, drone dream. Drones, oh sweet drones. The Carrick boasts these mechanical companions, adding a layer of support and versatility to your adventures. Point number seven, modularity magic. The Carrick is modular, allowing you to customize and adapt as per your gameplay needs, as we touched on earlier. Huge, huge point for the Carrick here. Number eight, cargo champion. By default, the Carrick has more cargo space, which is a crucial advantage for those seeking to haul commodities across the verse. And finally, point number nine, dedicated captain's quarters. This is important for some and not that important for others, but you have your own personal sanctuary within the Carrick as the captain, whereas in the Odyssey, you have the same as the rest of the crew. So some pretty big points there for the Carrick. It is an incredible ship. It really, really is. But let's not rule out the Odyssey just yet. Let's turn our gaze over to the pros of the Odyssey. Number one, Hangar Heaven. The Odyssey has a much larger hangar, which is a playground for your fleet of ships. It offers endless variety of different gameplay loops of all these different ships that you can put into your cargo hold and take out at any point and even refuel on there. So that's, that's a pretty big one. Point number two, Vehicle Wonderland. A larger and sprawling vehicle bay for your ground vehicles. Point number three, Fuel Freedom. The mining and refining capability makes the Odyssey completely self-sufficient and potentially capable of unlimited range. Goodbye, fuel concerns. Point number four, shield supremacy. With a capital class shield, the Odyssey is a cosmic fortress, meaning it would withstand a whole lot more damage than the Carrick will. Point number five, firepower fiesta. Sporting bigger guns and missiles, the Odyssey is armed to the teeth for whatever the universe throws at it. Point number six, tractor beam tactics. The Odyssey comes equipped with a ship tractor beam, which is a game changer for those sticky situations and cargo hauling. Point number seven, Swiss Army ship. Being a jack of all trades, the Odyssey is versatile, giving you the freedom to explore various gameplay options. And finally, point number eight, private quarters. All crew members get their own quarters, a touch of luxury in the vastness of space. Whereas in the Carrick, all of the crew have to share bunk beds, now moving all that to one side, my honest advice is that if you have the store credit or you can afford to do it if you're in real life money if you want to, then buy the CCU upgrade from the Carrick to the Odyssey or indeed buy a CCU chain from start to the Odyssey so that you have the Odyssey locked in at the price it's currently at because there is a chance it will go up when it comes out. However, don't apply that CCU upgrade yet. Just, just hold on to it. Keep it in your hangar and see what happens when the Odyssey comes out. As long as that CCU is there and you've bought it and it's sitting in your hangar, then you can upgrade it at any point and you don't have to pay any more than you've already paid. And finally, my opinion of both of these ships. I would say they are both great purchases and they have their own unique places in the verse. I actually don't see them so much as competitors, but more that they actually complement each other. I think the Carrick being the better pathfinder can map these jump points and can find these different points of interest all around the verse, but then you probably want to take the Odyssey to them because if they are out in the sticks and there's nowhere to refuel, you're not so worried. You can keep going for a lot longer. And I think that's really important. And if you get into a fight, 
you could have a very nice fighter like an F8C chilling in your hangar to pop out and just go and kill whoever's chasing you. So there we have it. And as my closing statement, I will say this. If I could afford both, I would have both. I don't think that's going to help you with your decision at all today, but <laughs> that is my honest, my honest opinion. If I could, I would have both because they are both incredible ships. I will almost certainly be working towards earning the Carrick in-game when I have the Odyssey. So, and that is it. I've been GFA. You've been fantastic. Don't forget to leave your comments and your thoughts down below. I want to have the open dialogue with all of you in the comments section. And make sure to hit that subscribe button to be part of the family. And go ahead and hit that like button for me. Support the channel. Help me reach 5,000 subscribers. Hopefully before the end of the year. Very unlikely. But you guys can do it. I know you can do it. All the best. And I will see you in the next video. Which, by the way, is one you're going to want to watch. Because I am certain that I have captured the best gameplay footage of the Su Len. And it's a super fun video. Day 1 IAE. The Su Len's just been released. It's a bunch of us there just having fun together. Loads of people from the stream joined in. It's a hoot. It's a hoot. Stick around for it. You don't want to miss it. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.